So this speaker uh, is Oh Jang Gwan from International University. And he will talk about the intersection diagrams and yeah, some algorithms, please. Thank you, Sangi, for introduction. And thanks for organizers of Round the World Relay in Combinatorics. I'm very happy to present my recent result on this seminar. Um, this is about some algorithmic properties of intersection diagrams. This is joint work with uh, Lars CFK and Janole Tele from University of Bergen. So I guess uh, uh, most of you are familiar with uh, intersection graphs, but not familiar with intersection diagrams. So I will take some time to introduce uh, what are intersection diagrams and some historic of them. And interestingly, um, compared to the intersection graphs for undirected graphs, there are not much algorithmic applications of intersection diagrams. So we try to see this. And because of a recent successful story on the MIMIS parameter, we introduced a direct analog for the by MIMIS. And we figured out that some of the restricted version of intersection diagrams have by MIMIS, by MIMIS so that we can find some meta theorem for locally checkable problems for direct versions. So we will discuss about this and I will uh, put some open problems at the end of the talk. So this is uh, already on the archive. So if you miss something, you can just check the uh, paper on the archive. Okay, let me start with the intersection graph. So as you know, the intersection graphs are the graphs whose vertices are represented by a sum set so that the two vertices are adjacent, if and only the corresponding sets intersect. So the first example is uh, interval graphs, where vertices are the, represented by uh, intervals on the real line, so that the two vertices are adjacent, if and only if they intersect, the corresponding sets intersect. And the below model is the permutation graphs, where that uh, each vertex is represented by uh, some segment between the two, pair, two given parallel lines, and then we obtain an intersection graph for them. So these two intersection graphs are mostly famous, most famous graphs, but there are lots of intersection uh, graphs like circular arc graphs, circle graphs, unit disk graphs, rectangle graphs, and so on, right? Um, so what is the intersection diagram? So um, an intersection diagram is a diagram, directed graph, <coughs> where every vertex is represented by uh, some ordered pair of sets. So namely SV and TV. So you can, uh, you can read it as a source set and terminal set. And with the property that uh, there, is a arc, there is an edge from the V to W, depend on if SV and TW intersect. So here is an example where that uh, um, um, because, uh, so you can see that the SB intersects uh, TA and TC. So we add an edge from the B to A and C, but because the SA doesn't intersect uh, TB, so we didn't put an edge from S, uh, A to B. But between the A and C, you can see that both edges are, both edges exist. So um, this concept first introduced by Bainecke and some fire school. Uh, they use this concept to characterize the line diagrams, but, uh, but just a few moments. So in the, in, the, in the whole context was not about this, but in the very small portion of the paper, they used this concept. But later, Sen, Das, Roy, West introduced the interval diagrams and tried to work significantly. And later, uh, Sen, Das, West discussed the circular arc diagrams and we will discuss permutation diagrams and several variants of the natural variants of undirected model have been uh, discussed. But you probably know that the codile graph is an intersection graph of uh, subtrees in a tree. So you can imagine that uh, what are the intersection diagraph of subtrees in a tree. 
but you can um, um, you can easily figure out that uh, actually every digraph is an intersection digraph of uh, substars in a star. So this is a uh, quite uh, surprising argument, um, but the construction is quite simple. What you do is that uh, given any digraph, you put a vertex dominating all the edge, all the vertices. So you create a star like that. And then the, for every vertex, you put the T terminal set on that vertex and just uh, add uh, uh, for every vertex uh, uh, for the out neighbors. Um, so you put the S, S that uh, together with the center. So you put a star where that the star uh, is a center at the new vertex and then the uh, vertices want to go. Then the, you, you add an edge exactly when A has a uh, neighbor to B. So you, if you draw, then it's very simple. So this was first observed by Harari, Kaber, and Ben Morris in 1982. Um, yeah, but interestingly, um, um, very interestingly, I couldn't find any papers about the uh, algorithm applications on the full interval digraphs. That's maybe the underlying so we can I guess that uh, this is because underlying undirected on graphs of interval digraphs quite uh, different from the interval graphs so here is an example so so we know that interval graphs do not contain the one subdivision of k13 as an induced subgraph so this is one of the obstruction uh, minimal obstruction but for inter so we can get a grid as an underlying undirected on graph, so interval digraphs. So uh, we can so the here is a model where that the, in the first left dummy, what I put is that T V1, SV2, T V3, SV4, and T by V5, which create the first line on the uh, first row pass. And then we just put on the top that the SW1 and TW2 and SW3, etc to make a matching to the second layer. And then the, in the second dummy, I create the path between the W1, W2, and W3, and so on. And then I, I can simply recourse to uh, create uh, some grid. Does it make sense? So, so I don't know, I couldn't find any argument, but just uh, we guess that the probably this kind of argument makes difficult to find uh, algorithmic applications on general interval diagrams. And um, so the people already know about this and then people try to think about some restrictions on the interval diagrams. Um, so which we found the three models. The first one is that the interval nest diagrams defined by prisoner, um, which requires that the terminal set should be contained in the source set for every vertex. And uh, actually the 10, 10 years ago, Maera defined the interval catchy digraphs, which she further restrict that the TV has to be single. Yeah, TV is contained in SV and TV has to be a single term. And prisoner proved in, sorry. Yeah, prisoner proved in 1994 that uh, uh, some uh, underlying, some problems on underlying undirected graphs. And as a directed problem, so these two independent dominating set and corner can be solved in polynomial time on interval nest digraphs if the representation is given. But he only uh, give up recognition algorithm for interval catch digraphs, but for not for nest digraphs. So that's the reason why uh, uh, that he tried to generalize the algorithm for catch digraphs for further. And so that's why he defined the nest digraphs. And also the, just uh, in the another context, uh, Feder, Heng, and Huang Rafi in 2012, they uh, defined adjusted interval digraphs. Um, so which requires that the, the source set and terminal set have the same left-hand point. So we just uh, uh, read uh, the real line as the uh, left to the right, and then the, they have the same left hand point. So they didn't uh, think about some algorithmic application of uh, these classes, but 
they just uh, related to the some list of prism problem and they conjecture that when h is a reflexive die graph reflexive means that every every vertex has a loop um, H list on prism is polynomial time solvable if H is an adjusted interval digraph and is MP complete otherwise. So as far as I know, this is still open. They prove the one direction. So if H is an adjusted interval digraph, it's a polynomial. But the other direction is open, I guess. So you can see that the, all these uh, summer variants, um, you can see that the S, S, they require that source set and terminal set have to be intersect, right? So, uh, so we try to think about the, what kind of general property can we have for with the only this restriction. So we say that the intersection digraph is reflexive if the source set and terminal set intersect for every vertex. So the terminology reflexive is already uh, quite used. So also the reflexive intersection digraph was previously defined. Um, so, he, so even though I didn't define the, what are by mimics, but I just want to mention the main result at the beginning because I don't want to put the main result at the end of the talk. So the, we, we, what we prove is that the following intersection digraphs are bounded by mimics. So the reflexive interval digraphs and reflexive H digraphs, so as a generalization of uh, interval digraphs and uh, adjusted versions of permutation digraphs and routine directed path diagrams. So if you know the uh, corresponding so un underlying model, then you can easily imagine, but maybe, so I will, I will go uh, to the definition later on. And what I, uh, what I also argue is that the interval diagrams, tournaments and acyclic diagrams have unbounded by mimics. And um, so as an algorithm application, so what it shows is that uh, um, we formalized uh, so several set of problems called the locally checkable problems. And when we prove that they can be solved in polynomial time on digraphs of bounded by mimics when decomposition is given. So this set of problems includes the kernel problem, dominating set problem, asymptism, and oriented k color. Um, so I saw that the kernel problem is quite studied in the uh, directed graph uh, yeah, groups. So kernel is the, uh, basically the independent set where the, 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 their in neighbors dominates all the vertices. Like it's the opposite of the dominating. Usually in the directed graph, it dominates it means that it dominates by uh, our neighbors. Yeah, but kernel is the, um, the, the the independence that covering the order vertices by in neighbors. And oriented K coloring is uh, uh, some kind of colorings, um, which is uh, some can be seen as a variance of a home problem. So we will visit this problem later. Um, I would like to mention that uh, this algorithm um, theorem, the second theorem, we need the uh, decomposition as an uh, input. But uh, for the interval digraphs, the Muller has a recognition algorithm, and then we can use them to recognize. And then when it is uh, interval digraphs, we can output the decomposition and then uh, output the representation, and then we can uh, simply translate to the decomposition because the reflexivity can be checked easily. So we can recognize the reflexive interval diagrams. And the other result is that, uh, so we also proved that uh, we consider the powers of digraphs and for, we proved that the R powers of digraphs of by is W, most have by is and most RW. By this argument, we can show that the distance variance of local check of problems also can be solved in polynomial time. So the problem includes the distance R dominating set and K corner. Okay, now um, I'll take some time to introduce the biomimics. What are biomimics? Um, so we need to compute the maximum induced matching. 
So I define uh, some notations. For vertex set A in a die graph, we denote by the A bar as a uh, rest of the set. And a vertex partition of type A and A bar will be called the cut. And for two vertex sets A and B, we denote by G A to B be the bipartite die graph induced by edges from A to B. We remove all the other edges. And for die graph G, uh, we denote by nu of G as the size of a maximum induced matching. So induced matching means that uh, just matching where there are no further edges between the matching edges. So uh, lastly, we define the function by mean of a set A to be a new, the sum of a new of G A to A bar and the new of the G A bar to A. So in the picture, um, so we have a graph with the A and A bar, and then the first, the middle figure uh, denotes uh, G A to A bar, and the, the last figure is G A bar to A. The largest induced matching in the first figure is one, and second figure is two, right? Just by MIMO A should be three. And as usual, we use a branch decomposition to define a risk. So the pair of branch decomposition um, uh, is a branch decomposition if T is a tree with uh, all, all internal loads have a degree three and sigma is a function from the vertex set to the leaves of T. And for every edge of the tree, we define the width as the by mean function of the one part. And width of the decomposition is the maximum width over all edges. And by mimis of a graph is a minimum mix over all decompositions. And linear by mimis is just defined by uh, using caterpillar branch decomposition. Or you can just consider the linear ordering of the vertices. So, yeah, some comment is that uh, by mimis is the direct analog of a mimis of for undirected graphs which was defined by Martin Bashe in 2012. And this definition is similar to the definition of by rank with introduced by Kant and Ra. So they extend the rank with to the directed graphs by considering like this two, two graphs, dividing two graphs and compute the rank, the sum of the rank. So this is basically the same uh, split uh, with the, what, we, what they did. So one observation is that if G is an undirected graph and H is an orientation of G, then mimis of G, so mimis of the undirect, undirected graph simply defined by uh, uh, when you have a cut, you just simply compute the maximum induced matching in the cut. So mimis is the lower bound of the by mimis of the H because uh, when you, so you simply take uh, same decomposition and then, um, so if you have uh, some, 10 induced matching of size 10 in the G, then the, this, this induced matching has to be split into the two, anyway, two bipartite graphs in for H, right? So they have to be a sum up in when you compute the by mimis there. So the mimis of the G is, would be a, a most by mimis of H, but the other direction is not true because the tournaments have unbounded by mimis while tournaments have uh, uh, some mimics simply one. Okay, so the, uh, go to the, our manager. Um, we first argue that the reflexive interval diagraph have uh, linear by mimics and most two. The proof is quite simple. So the, let me remind you that the reflexive version means that the source set and terminal set has to intersect, right? So what is simply do is that the, for every vertex, so we choose uh, some point QV, which is on the intersection of a uh, source set and terminal set. And we simply give a linear ordering of the vertex set with respect to the ordering of QV. We just uh, read uh, from the real line from left to the right. And then the, just uh, with respect to the appearance of uh, QV, we just give a linear ordering of the vertex set. So when you look at the any cut in the middle, one can see that the, like in the figure, 
uh, one can see that uh, there is no induced matching of size two in G A to A bar. Yeah, suppose here is a, some example. For instance, uh, suppose there is an induced matching like the V1, W1, and V2 and W2. Um, but then the, from the A side, we, we only need to consider the source set and for, for A bar, we need to consider terminal set, right? Because we only consider the edges from A to A bar. Um, so you can uh, easily figure out that if uh, SV1 and TW1 intersect and SV2 and TW2 intersect, then one of SV1 and TW2 or SV2 and TW1 have to be, have to intersect. So this means that uh, there cannot have uh, uh, two induced match. Also in the opposite side. So this means that uh, in this disordering give a linear binomial sign most. Um, so this can be generalized to the H digraphs. So originally Biro and Huster and Tusa in 1990, they defined the H graphs. So H graphs is the basically the intersection graph of connected subgraphs in some H subdivision. So you can, you can think about the interval graphs as a P2 graphs or circular arc graph as a C, C3 graphs and so on. Um, we simply modify the definition into the inter, uh, digraph version where H digraphs are simply intersection digraphs of connected subgraphs in an H subdivision. But here H is an undirected graph. So we argue that the reflexive H digraphs have linear binomials at most 12 times the number of edges. So here the picture is about the K4 digraphs. The black graphs are the subdivision of K4 and you have some connected, sub, connected subgraphs. Uh, where because of reflexive, uh, each S source set and terminal set are intersecting. Yeah, so quite recently, Fomin and Golovao and Raymond showed that the H graphs have linear mimics and most two times number of edges plus one. So um, actually our theorem um, generalized a linear bound of uh, their result because uh, our because uh, um, if source set or terminal set are exactly the same, then this give uh, some by orientation of H graphs. So by dividing uh, two, we obtain a bound for the some limits. So we our result give uh, six times the number of uh, edges uh, of the H graphs, linear limits of H graphs. Um, but because of the die graphs, we need a, a little bit lower. So the proof idea uh, is that uh, uh, it's the same as the interval graphs. For every vertex, we choose a point QV in the intersection. But now we take a BF or BFS ordering from some point, starting from some point, and we just give a linear ordering with respect to it. So we just uh, take a BFS ordering of the H subdivision. And then just by looking at the appearance of the QV, and we give a linear ordering of them. Um, because the two so each branching path is uh, divided into the at most the three maximal sub maximal passes which are contained in A or A bar. So this uh, will give us, uh, some argument that you can bound the linear by means. So basically reduce to the argument to the interval digraphs. Okay, so other classes, I just want to shortly mention about this. So adjusted permutation graph is the permutation digraphs where that the source set and terminal set are not arbitrarily intersect, but they intersect on the first line. So we fix the first line and then we require that the source and terminal set have to intersect at the first line. And because of this, uh, we, you can guess that the, how to give an ordering of the vertices, right? So we just look at the appearance on the first line and then we give a linear ordering. So this, so this will give a, a bound on the linear by minutes. 
um, for the rooted direct pass graph. Um, so for the undirected graphs, the rooted direct pass graph means that uh, you have an underlying undirected graph and then you have an intersection graph of the rooted passes. Rooted passes means that the, each pass consists of the vertices that are compared to each other. It's the same as the uh, uh, undirected uh, model, but here exhausted is defined by uh, for every vertex, the uh, end point of a source set, which is far from the root, is the same as the uh, terminal set, which is the end point of the terminal set, which is far from the root, as in the figure. Yeah. But uh, this adjusted rooted directed pass graph have uh, unbounded linear by means because it contains some bioorientation of trees or the trees. Um, here are some open problem is that uh, we couldn't prove that uh, classes of uh, reflexive permutation digraphs or reflexive rooted direct pass digraphs are bounded by Mimis. This might be interesting. So um, we couldn't, and so it's uh, non-trivial to generate uh, some uh, natural ordering, for instance, for reflexive permutation digraphs. So our guess is that uh, it's unbounded, but it's also difficult to construct or something. So maybe you can try to obtain some constructions to showing the low bound. Ah, so that's it. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry. No. Uh, oh, no, sorry. okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so in the middle, I have some open problems. <laughs> Okay. Um, so the in the rest of the talks, so I will uh, discuss about the, what are locally checkable problems. So Tele and Proskowski in 1997 uh, defined the uh, locally checkable problems for undirected graphs. And the one of the important results about that is that uh, the problems are all polynomial time solvable on graphs of bounded mimics. Um, Proved by Boucher and Teller and Boucher in 2011. So, one of, so the local check, check of problems are divided into the two classes. So, one of the is a vertex finding a minimum or maximum set, or the finding of some vertex partition. So for finding a uh, vertex set problem is described as a sigma rho problem, where sigma and rho are some subsets of natural integers, including zero. And you want to find the maximum or minimum vertex set S such that for every vertex inside S, so the number of neighbors in S has to be in the sigma. And for every vertex outside S, the number of neighbors in S is contained in row. So for instance, if you, if you want an independent set, so row can be arbitrary, but in the sigma has to be zero, right? So. If you describe, if you want to describe dominating set, um, you don't want to restrict the sigma, but for rho, the, the every vertex outside want to have at least one neighbor. So the rho uh, just excludes zero. So this kind of argument uh, general, generates uh, several problems. And we simply adapt to the directed version where this, we need this now sigma plus or sigma minus rho plus and rho minus because uh, it has out neighbors and in neighbors. You can guess so what, what you do. Uh, for every vertex in S, the number of out neighbors in S and number of in neighbors in S has to be in sigma plus and sigma minus respectively. And for every vertex outside S, the number of out neighbors and in neighbors are contained in sigma plus, uh, rho plus and rho minus respectively. So the so user dominating set problem, of course, can be represented, but also corner and independent dominating set problem can be represented. So corner is, the, as I said, uh, it's a basically independent set. So sigma plus and sigma minus are described as a zero. But uh, in the, so we want to cover all the vertices by in neighbors. So the, uh, in the other way, the, in the, uh, the vertex outside S, 
has to have uh, one out neighbor to the set, right? So the row plus is the ex row plus excludes zero. But user independent dominating set, we exclude the zero from the row minus. And it captured the several variants of dominating set problem, uh, which was the previously discussed in the just uh, separate uh, papers with a uh, different set of authors. And we figure out that the, all these kind of problems can be captured in this framework. Um, I want to shortly remark about the corner uh, a little bit more. Um, so the, interestingly, corner was uh, first discussed by uh, von Neumann and Morgenstern about some game theory. So they consider some cooperative game where that uh, they define a digraph from the cooperative game be between the some solutions. And in, in the digraph, the corner represents some set of winning positions. So because of this uh, interesting motivation, people quite to work on the corners and also try to see the complexity result. So Kavata proved in 1973 that the finding a corner, even just the finding a corner is empty complete. Um, you can see that the, uh, not, not necessarily every digraph has a corner, like a triangle, directed triangle doesn't have any corner. And uh, there are some several results, but just by looking at the recent digraph book, I found that uh, it's poly time solvable on locally semi-complete digraphs and quasi transitive digraphs. Um, so the slightly general version was discussed uh, recently, so called the K at a corner. So that K, uh, K described that the vertices is in S between the vertices in S, they have distance and this K. And for every vertex outside S, there is a, a, the path of length and most L from V to S. So user corner can be seen as a two comma one corner. And our, uh, our result on the powers of graphs implies that the, actually K comma K minus one corner can be solved in polynomial time on digraphs of bounded by minimis. But one uh, open problem is that uh, it's, uh, uh, we cannot capture the KL corner in general um, in some way. So we are not sure whether it can be solved in polynomial time. So this may be, but um, it, it looks very fast positive, but we couldn't confirm yet. And the vertex partition problem also uh, can be defined like this. So you have a matrix, so Q by Q matrix, where that uh, each coordinate D, uh, large D I J is the, uh, contains the two uh, subsets of N, called, namely mu plus and mu minus. And the problem is to find the vertex partition um, of a graph into X1 to XQ such that for every I and J, the, the number of out neighbors and in neighbors from a vert each vertex of xi in xj are contained in the mu plus and mu minus respectively. So we can describe uh, naturally the directed h one vision problem because uh, we can simply consider the number of vertices uh, on an h and uh, corresponding two vertices like uh, if there is an h from vi to vj in h then we describe as um, any natural number for both mu plus and mu minus. But uh, importantly, if there is no edge, then we describe as a zero for both because we don't want to have an edge there. And uh, so Pena define uh, oriented K coloring, um, which can be seen as a directed H homomorphism for some orientation of a K click. So which means that you want to color into a K colors where that the in between the colors, there are only one direction edges from one side to the other. And so, so for solving this problem, we can consider all possible orientations and solving the, solve the directed H homomorphism for each orientation. So, so we have to run the algorithm like uh, all possible orientations. But anyway, we can do for fixed K. 
And Alon and Bang Jensen and Bessie recently defined the two out coloring where that uh, you want to color into two colors so that uh, each vertex has out neighbors on uh, its two colors. So actually they define a K coloring where that if every vertex is not monochromatic, but our framework doesn't describe all K coloring, but just the two out coloring can be represented because we can force that the, the neighbors have at least one neighbor in each colors. So I saw a, I saw some uh, uh, more result on the oriented K coloring. So oriented K coloring is a, a polynomial time solver, but if K is M was three and MP complete otherwise. And some similar notion is called the simply simple K coloring was introduced by Small Smolikova, uh, which does basically the same concept between colors, but the oriented K colorings uh, they require that each each color class is, is independent. But simple K coloring that we, does not require anything for it inside of each part. And also Dufy and Mac. Mac Free. And so Pena introduced a K diapass coloring, which required that for every two vertices of distance and most K, they get different colors. So this can be represented by your powers of graphs. So, so the conclusion is that all these variants are poly time solvable on digraphs of band by means. So I think I have uh, like a five minutes. So I want to mention a little bit on the meta theorem. So we proved that uh, all these locally checkable problems can be solved in polynomial time on digraphs of bounded by Um I don't want to give a full details, but uh, we simply adapt an idea for undirected graphs of bounded mimics. And for bounded mimics, what we do is that we define the notion of a D neighborhood equivalent. So this is very important. So for, for some vertex at A and some two vertexes B1 and B2 inside A, sorry, it should be in, in, in A. So we say that they are <coughs> the neighborhood equivalent. If for every vertex outside A, so that if the number of neighbors to the B1 and B2, if they are the less than D, then they have to be same. And if they are more than uh, at least the D, then we are, we don't care. But both of them have to be, has to have uh, an So uh, the argument, so the, yeah. Basher and uh, Lamy Belmont proved that the number of equivalent classes is bounded by n to the d times the mean function of a. So mean function a here is that in the undirected graph, the number of inches matching the maximum size of induced matching between A and A bar. And for every locally checkable problem, there is a, some proper D, uh, for fixed locally checkable problem, there is a, some constant D where it's a sufficient to consider D neighborhood equivalence classes basically. And you can just uh, run some dynamic programming because of the number of the equivalence classes bounded. So we can run in XP time. So what we simply do is that uh, we just uh, use the D out neighborhood equivalence and D in neighborhood equivalence. And uh, we do not need to separately do it. So we just take a product of them so that uh, each set has uh, both D out neighborhood equivalent and D in neighborhood equivalence classes. So we can refine the set and use them directly. So if you want to get uh, more idea, um, so you can just visit uh, the paper by paper in 2013 uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, the, the algorithm on graphs of bounded mimics. Oh. So I shall tell you remark about the powers of uh, like graphs of by, bounded by mimics. So, so I want to argue that uh, um, if you have a uh, by mimics decomposition of this W, and if you take a power R power, then the by mimics have have at most R W. Yeah, suppose that the uh, by mimics is uh, more than R W, then what you do is that so the in the, so each cut we we want to say that the 
the by mean function is at most RW. Suppose that this cut has a by mean function is more than RW. Then what you argue is that uh, um, so for every, so you have an induced matching of size more than RW, like V1, W1, and V2, W2, and so on. And we just, because uh, it's crossing between the cuts, we, we can find uh, some edge in the middle of the path where that A1, B1, and A2, B2, and so on. And then we, we choose uh, some set of uh, more than W matchings where that uh, distance from the V1 to A1 are all the same. And then we can argue that the edges A1, the corresponding edges A1, B1, A2, B2, et cetera, has to be uh, induced match. For instance, uh, like A2, B1 has an, is an edge, then the, there is a, a pass from V2 to W1 as well. So it contradicts that the V2, W1 is not an edge on the power. But the one open problem is that uh, uh, for un undirected graphs, we, we can prove that the powers of graphs of mimis W have a mimis at most 2W, but here we cannot do. So, uh, so I don't know if we, we can do, but so the question is that is there some constant only depending on W such that the R, whatever you take R, the R powers have uh, by mimis at most DW. So for fixed, for fixed cut, uh, we can give us some low bound. So even though you don't have any induced matching of size two, so you can uh, blow up the um, by mean function as much as you can. Um, but it doesn't say that uh, so as a whole graph by mean function, by mean miss is uh, bounded, uh, unbounded, unbounded. So it will be interesting to solve this problem. Okay, so the summary is that uh, we proved that uh, these classes have bounded by mimics so that uh, we can prove the, all the locally checkable problems in polynomial time. And also we can argue that our powers variance can be solved in polynomial time. So some open problem I already mentioned, but uh, just uh, together with them. The first one is that uh, uh, we want to determine whether the reflexive permutation digraphs or rooted direct path digraphs are bounded by mimics. And also the for H, H graphs, it was uh, proved by Shaffley et uh, that the recognizing H graph is MP complete if H contains the diamond graph as minor and poly time solvable if H is a fixed tree. So this solve uh, almost all graphs H. So can you do something for H digraphs? This looks like an interesting problem. We don't know even for the, ex except the uh, uh, interval case, we don't know anything. And as a problem case, uh, um, so, we, so it's uh, interesting to look at the directed feedback vertex set um, because uh, in the undirected graphs, actually feedback vertex set um, can be solved in poly time solvable on bounded mimics. It's proved that quite recently, but we were not sure about the direct feedback vertex set because uh, for feedback vertex set, we want to find uh, some induced subtree as uh, in the maximal way, right? But uh, so, so the maximum size of induced matching give us some restrictions to how the trees can intersect there. But for directed feedback vertex set, like autonomous can be uh, acyclic, right? So it looks uh, MP complete, but we are not sure about this at the moment. And another kind of coloring, uh, uh, famous coloring on digraphs is acyclic R coloring, which is the partition of the vertex set into the acyclic sets. And we are not, uh, we pose an open problem whether that this can be solved in Poly time or digraphs are bounded by mimics, and also for K L corner as I discussed before. Yes, and the last pro. Oh, okay, so probably I already yeah, passed a long time. Okay, um, yeah. So thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let's unmute ourselves and thank the speaker. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry for the interruption in the middle of the talk. Uh, do you have any questions?
So I will ask a question if you like. Um, okay. Uh, I wonder if you have looked at the connections between interval digraphs and tolerance graphs, uh, specifically uh, the catch, uh, the, the interval catch digraphs that you talked about are a special case of, uh, I think, what we call point uh, <clears throat> by, by tolerance uh, digraphs in our book on tolerance graphs. So you might find some interesting inspiration for other classes at the same time. Okay, thank you for the comment. I have, we haven't looked at the tolerance graphs. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe I will look at the uh, literatures. Okay, thank you. I'll send you an email. Yeah, thank you very much. Any well, other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you know something about the relation of MIMVIT and by MIMVIT to the new parameter TWINVIT? Uh, to Tunis. Um, uh, I think uh, I have uh, looked at the before. I think uh, even twenty. I think they are incomparable, if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. Think, uh, mm. yeah. Because I saw a slide uh, of uh, some presentation that uh, so they so the. So bounded by bounded mimis is not captured by bounded mimis, but the other direction I don't know. But I think they have to be com uh, incomparable. Yeah. One would guess, yeah, they are so much different. But yeah, <laughs> okay. Thanks. Any other questions? I I have one question. So when you define these locally checkable uh, problems on directed graphs. Uh, you you probably require that this uh, sigma sets and row sets to be uh, finite or co-finite, don't you? Like in order to describe the problem. Uh, ah, yes, 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 right. Yeah, I missed to write that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It should be, right. I think, uh, mm, uh, yes, let me check, I think. Uh, Yeah, I think a problem can be simply defined for, for the uh, for the algorithmic stops. I think we have to assume that it's uh, finite or cofinite. Yes. Because uh, then we can check, we can pick uh, some property for sure. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> uh, any other questions? So then if not, uh, let's thank the speaker again. And... Yeah. Thank you.